Happy Sabbath, brethren and friends. God is good. And all the time. Indeed, God is. My good friend would say magnanimous. We are here today. It's the beginning of our youth week of prayer. And our youth will be in action throughout this week. Moving from week of prayer we will be going into a week of revival so we are actually going to be engaged in two weeks of spiritual emphasis now while it is two weeks the youth will be in charge it doesn't mean that the adults will not have a role to play we all have a role in this uh, work and that is to help each one of us to be a better people for the kingdom and to help others to be prepared also. So we are encouraging you throughout this week to join us online. It is a venture between the Seaview Gardens Seventh-day Adventist Church and the Olympic Way Seventh-day Adventist Church. So both churches will be in action uh, nightly I'm asking brethren for your support I know many persons are saying we are tired of online but the fact is it's a joint effort between the two churches so we will not be able to be in the same places at the same time so I'm asking you to bear with us and just to support the program I can't overemphasize that I am um, brethren this week is a week of prayer if you look around, you would have observed that a number of our youth are missing. I don't know what is going through your mind. I don't know how you feel about that. But it can't be a good feeling when we see that our young people, many of them are not here. And they are not here for various reasons. We need to find them. We need to bring them back. We can only do so through the power of the Holy Spirit. We can only do so through prayer. Prayer changes things. And that is why I'm asking of you all to join us in prayer during the course of this week as we agonize with God on behalf of our young people. The devil wants to snatch them, but God has a work for each and every one of them to do. So I'm asking you, brethren, to join us online this week as we... Uh, take all of this situation to God in prayer. Secondly, I want us to know that while we will not be going out today for our Global Youth Day, we will be going out. So we are encouraging you, as was mentioned this morning, that you will give your contribution so that we can get those care packages out to those who are in need and those whom we would say we have forgotten yes also while we are on the youth it's not just the youth that are missing just look around and you will see there are some persons whom since covid 19 started they have not come to church we need to find them too so i'm asking you brethren that the work is great touch base yes with those individuals whom you have not seen at church and let them know yes they can come out now to worship there's no excuse because many persons are hiding behind the covid experience for not coming out now that we are opening up they can come out so please encourage them and finally uh tomorrow morning between the hours of seven o'clock and eight o'clock we will be having what is known as pep hour of prayer pep hour of prayer our students will be sitting their pep exams next week and so the zone 2 federation of east jamaica conference is hosting a program for one hour tomorrow morning this is what we call sacrifice because many persons don't like to wake up early on a sunday morning but we are setting aside this one hour to pray with them to give them some motivational tips 
and how to be prepared going into the exam. We have some professionals who are lined up to present and you know it won't be long because it's just an hour. So I'm going to ask if you know of persons who will be sitting the PEP exam just to look in the various chats and you will see the link so they can join between the hours of 7 o'clock and 8 o'clock for our prayer. Let me thank you all and stay tuned because shortly we will be joining the Seaview Gardens SDA Church for the sermon at this time. Happy Sabbath, my brethren and friends here at the Seaview Gardens uh, SDA Church. Happy Sabbath, everyone. I can't hear you. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Are you happy to be out once again in your numbers? Oh my, I am too. I am too. I just want to take the opportunity to greet those who are joining us um, virtually at the Olympic Way Seventh-day Adventist Church. I am not sure if they're on as yet. Uh, they should be. Um, greetings to you all over there at Olympic Way. Um, my, my love and my, my best wishes are with you today uh, to uh, Elder Phillips and the team over there in Olympic Way and all the young people who are joining us and sharing with us um, from Olympic Way. Today is a special day. Elder Parks, today is a very special day. It is Global Youth Day. What day is it? Global Youth Day. And just for you to get excited, God has no grandchildren. And that means that we are all God's children. And so today we are all youths. Uh, we are all youths today and we are here to celebrate the goodness of God and to give some of that goodness to the communities around us and to share the love of God with others. Um, it begins a promising week. Today will not be the best. There, the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. We have some powerful young people who will be joining us tomorrow night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Friday night, and then we conclude on a Sabbath. Uh, it promises to be a powerful week. Uh, it promises to be a powerful week, 
uh, Elder, Elder McBean, it promises to be a wonderful week ahead of us. I want to take this time to thank you very much for the invitation and to thank Pastor Lewis, Pastor Michael Lewis, for his determination. But the, 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 the uh, providence would have it be otherwise that I am not here, but because of the efforts of your pastor, he has done his, his utmost best to have me here, and I am grateful for his efforts. I want to thank also my senior pastor, Melvin Francis, at the Meadowville Church for granting me the privilege to be here. We, we just started last week, and where am I today? At the Seaview Gardens Church, and I am delighted to be here. I also want to extend my gratitude for the expertise of Elder Benji. I don't know his right name, but I, I think it's, it's uh, Elder Benjamin. Thank you so much, Elder, for your expertise on the road. I got here safely and on time. And it's all because he, he, he did his very best. And you may know very well what that is. He did an excellent job. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Elder Benji. Thank you very much. Uh, we, uh, it is such a delightful pleasure to be sharing with our young people this week. And I want to thank them so much for all the work they are putting in behind the scenes. You see it and we are uh, surely the presence of God is here. Surely you can feel the awesome presence of God in the house of God today. I don't know about Olympic Way, but I can tell you here at Seaview Gardens, the presence of God can be felt. And today we are going to lift up the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to give all the glory and all the honor to the man Christ Jesus himself. He has set aside this day to spend with us, to give us his blessings, to re-energize us, and to bring us into his very presence. And we want to enjoy that today. I want to thank the praise team for the way they have led out in the praise and worship. It was commendable. It was extremely commendable. The psalmist David says that God inhabits the praise of his people. God inhabits the praise of his people. And sometimes it baffles me. It baffles me. I say to myself, why don't you praise God more? Why don't you worship more? Why don't you sing even though you can't sing more? When God inhabits the praises of his people, the Bible also says, let come, let us make a joyful noise unto God. That's the kind of God we serve. He wants to be with us he wants to worship with us he wants us to come into his presence and i'm so grateful that in jesus christ we can be brought before the very presence of an holy and awesome and terrifying god in jesus christ i wake up in the morning in the presence of god in jesus christ i go about my business in the presence of god in jesus christ i lay my head in the night in the presence of God. That's the kind of God we serve. And that's why we give thanks to Jesus. Because had it not been for the mercy and grace. And the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Where would we be today? Where would we be? Where would we be without Jesus? And so we're here to give him our all. I invite the praise team. To join me as we sing that beautiful song we started the service with. Uh, we're standing on holy ground. We want to reset the mood. We want to reset the tone. And invite the presence of God to be among us once again. Consecrate now yourselves as you... You may stand. You may stand, of course. And just before we, and just before we take that song... Let us read the scripture lesson which was so ably read by our dear sister. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and verse 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, 
for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. We're standing. We're standing. This is holy ground. We're standing. We're standing on holy ground. Sing that song, my sisters and brothers. For the Lord is here. And where and he is. Where he is, is holy. Is holy. Of course, we are standing. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy We're ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is here. For the Lord is here. And where he is. And where he is. Is holy. Is Prayerfully, prayerfully, prayerfully. We are standing on holy ground. On holy ground. And we know that there are angels all around. And I know. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Let us pray. Oh yes. Praise Jesus now. Jesus now. For we are standing in his presence. We are standing in God's presence on holy. Let us pray. Let us pray. Jesus now. We're standing. We are standing in God's presence. We are bowed and your eyes are closed. Almighty God, before your awesome throne we stand in the name of your son Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord for your salvation in Jesus. Thank you for the blood that was shed at Calvary. Thank you for coming to worship with us today. Lord, we ask that you will let self be crucified. Let every ounce of selfishness be trampled. Today, O oh God, we want nothing but your presence. We want nothing but your filling. Give us an experience with you that will last a lifetime today, O oh great Father. Remove your manservant. Speak to your people in no uncertain terms. Travel through the devices all the way over to Olympic Way. Touch the heart of someone today, O oh God. Let today not go in vain. Lord, we beg and we ask for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much.
Praise team, thank you so much. Our scripture lesson written by the Apostle Paul to the youth, Timothy, reminds Timothy that all scripture, not just some scripture, Elder Parks, and not just some scripture, Elder Phillips, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. The message today is very simple. Do not neglect God's word. It is your victory. Do not neglect God's word. It is your victory. Of course, the theme for the week is the present truth. God's message for today. And at this moment, in this very time, the message is, do not cast aside the word of God. It is your victory. I want to share with you briefly, under the caption, trampled, neglected, but still triumphant. Trampled, neglected, but still triumphant. Trampled, neglected, but still triumphant. I ran into the story somewhere of a lady called Mrs. Church. Mrs. Church, Elder Parks, lived in a time when there was no telephone, no cell phones, no smartphones, no internet, no emails. She communicated via letters at the post office. And as her custom was, Mrs. Church went to the post office and collected her mails. She hasted home to finish her daily chores and then to read her letters. In the letters she received, there was one labeled and marked and stamped urgent message, do not neglect. Mrs. Church spun around all morning doing her chores and making her dinner. Um, eventually, she remembered the letter the letters rather she ran to them and as her practice was she 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 prioritized the letters of her friends her pen pals from the uk she noticed that they had sent her money and so she began she 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 became excited she picked up and she ran to put herself together and to grab some stuff and just to go and collect the money her friends had sent. All this while, Mrs. Church neglected the letter marked and labeled urgent message, do not neglect. She was so excited and distracted by the money that was sent by her friends, she neglected the one letter that says, do not neglect. Little did Mrs. Church know that the letter she neglected was from her husband. And it said, leave home now. Leave the community now. There is an assassin coming to kill you. Escape now, my love. She didn't get the chance to read the letter. She ran, home, she ran from her home and ran straight to her friends. But there was destruction and death awaiting her on the way to her friends. Mrs. Church read the letters that were most important to her. She read what was true to her. She read what her friends sent her. And of course it was true. Her friends sent her money. But what was most urgent, what was most present, was not the truth of the friends. But it was the truth of the the letter that said urgent message do not neglect i wonder today my friends if there is a people in the church of the living god who reads and follows all the mails and emails headline and messages statuses and instagram posts and tiktok videos but they are neglecting and forgetting god's urgent message to his end time people they are neglecting and allowing their bibles to collect dust 
in their homes they are neglecting the word of God the B-I-B-L-E God's basic instruction before leaving earth God's letter of escape from a broken world filled with destruction and tragedy I wonder today if our Bibles are collecting dust in the week only to be discovered on Friday evening I wonder today if our young people and adults and children are neglecting God's word while drinking the poison of human philosophies and delusions and drugs and all manner of things. My friends, I'm here to tell you today that our God has written the greatest love letter of all time. 40 different minds under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Minds of different backgrounds, minds of different contexts, minds who existed in different time periods on earth's history. I can tell you today that they were in different time zones and they were different people and they had different experiences, but they all spoke about the love of an awesome God. They all tell the story of a man called Jesus Christ. They all predicted his coming and they all predicted his second coming. They all told the very same story. You see, Moses was a politician, a leader and a judge educated in the universities of Egypt. David was a king, a poet, a musician, shepherd and warrior. Amos was an animal herder. Joshua, a military general. Nehemiah, a cup bearer for a pagan king. Daniel, a prime minister. Solomon was king and philosopher. Luke was a physician and an historian. Paul was a rabbi and a teacher. Yet, my friends, all these authors, all these authors were moved by the same Holy Ghost. The same Holy Ghost that we're asking to touch down in Sila Garvin and touch down in an Olympic way. Touch down in the minds of the authors of the Bible. And that is why they testify of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And they say the devil is a liar. He uh, is a liar who wants to steal our salvation and our blessings. We cannot afford, my friends, to neglect to neglect the word of God. We cannot afford to neglect the one letter that says urgent message. Do not neglect. Because if we neglect the word of God, the word, my friends, will stand triumphant but we will surely fall if we neglect God's word the word will be victorious uh, but we will surely fail if we neglect God's word my friends we will not understand who we are we will not understand whose we are we will not understand what God has revealed about us and our genesis we will not understand where we are going because we've not entered our exodus experience if we neglect the so great a salvation in the word of god my friends it will be treacherous for god's people of course it was the neglect of god's word in the garden of eden the very beginning that led to sin God says of the fruit in the midst of the garden do not touch do not eat for in the day you eat thereof you shall surely die uh, Adam and Eve neglected God's words neglected God's command and because of that neglect sin entered our experience and the apostle Paul tells us that sin didn't come alone sin brought a friend and that friend is death and it's not just death for some but it's death for all but God decided that in spite of this tragedy in spite of them neglecting my words in Genesis in Exodus in the Garden of Eden in spite of all of that I am going to send them another love letter the Word of God the Bible itself that speaks about the ultimate love letter 
Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It was the neglect of God's words that led to sin and ultimately death. Today, everyone talks about inflation. We're all talking about the price of gas at the pump. It is getting out of control. But I can tell you, my friends, that there was an inflation from the beginning of sin. An inflation that doesn't threaten your bank account. It doesn't threaten your houses and land. It doesn't threaten to wipe out your food and resources. This inflation, my friends, is far more dangerous and far more lethal. And it existed from the inception of sin. It doesn't wipe out your resources. But the Bible tells me in Romans 6 verse 23. That the payment for sin is not your money. It's not your houses. It's not your car. It's not your lands. The payment for sin is death. But I am glad the word of God did not stop there. The word of God continued to tell us. But the gift of God is eternal life. And that gift comes through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. You see Adam and Eve neglected the word of God. For the lies of a serpent. A serpent who was controlled by the enemy. Satan himself. Today we live in a world that has neglecting the word of God and instead of and, and even though they are neglecting the word of God they are running to the lies of the same serpent the same devil that beguiled and deceived Eve is still deceiving the world and men and women today all across our societies the world is making the very same mistake that Adam and Eve made in the garden. And I'm here today to tell you. The, 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 the week of prior message for you today. Is we can't afford to make that mistake anymore. We've endured enough. We've been through enough. We've been dying enough. It's too much. Too much now. We have to stop neglecting the word of God. And go back to being Bible backed. Bible based Christians. The people who know the book. The people who follow the book of God. So we live in a world that has neglected God's words for the lies of the serpent. A world in which there is all manner of skepticism and philosophy, science and technology. A world that has elevated these things above God. You see friends, we live in a world that has decided to place God on a pile of garbage labeled not necessary. Our world has not only deleted God from society and rejected God from society. But like Adam and Eve, they are swapping God for the lies of the devil. Making altars to false gods and worshipping false God like the children of Israel. Every single time they wandered away from God, they didn't wander into nothingness. They wandered into pagan worship and false worship. Don't be fooled. The world is making the very same mistake today. A God is taking the place of the true and living God. And that is the devil himself. He doesn't venture openly. He doesn't show up himself. Because he knows that if we see him, we will run to God. And so he hides behind our money. He hides behind our prosperity. He hides behind entertainment. He hides behind pleasure. He hides behind pride and debauchery. He hides behind appearance and acceptance. He hides behind likes and dislikes. The devil is tricking the world once again. But I can tell you my friends. 
if you stand firm on the word of God, if you stand firm on the word of God, Satan can try all he likes, but he will not be able to defeat you. No wonder our children's our children are being murdered. Our women are being slaughtered. The blood of the innocent is running in our streets. Perhaps, my friends, the world is paying a high price for neglecting the word of God. Perhaps, my friend, there is an inflation you should be worrying about that you don't remember anymore. There is a price we are paying for neglecting God's word. And that price is eternal life. Is it worth it today? Is it worth it today for a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? Is it worth it today? Is it worth it today? You see, my friends, the devil knows that the word of God is filled with the love of God. The devil knows that the word of God is filled with the love of God, Elder McBean. And so he doesn't want us to embrace the word of God. He doesn't want us to remember the word of God. He wants us to neglect the word of God. And so from the very beginning of time, the enemy of God, Satan himself, we're exposing him today. He has been attacking the word of God. And that's why he came under the disguise of a serpent and said to Eve, You shall not surely die, but you will become like gods, knowing good and evil. It was a lie from the beginning and it's still a lie today. And it's a lie that is taking countless of souls to hopeless graves. Graves that have no hope. Graves that have no repentance. Graves that have no rest. The devil is still telling that lie. He's still attacking the word of God. My friends, I want to share with you that the Bible has been the most hated, persecuted, and attacked book in history. From the beginning. The devil doesn't like the word of God. He doesn't like God's word. No other book has received more attacks than the Bible. No other book has received more criticism than the Bible. No other book has been sidelined and marginalized and cast aside like the Bible. All manner of books enters our school system and flows through the education system. But there are some hell-bent on pushing the Bible out of schools. As a matter of fact, as we speak, there are schools who do not want to hear a word from the Bible. Yet they preach the philosophy of evolution. Yet they preach this religion that we came from monkeys. And we evolved from chemicals. But they don't want to hear the story of the Bible. And this is because there is an enemy attacking God's word. The word of God, my friends, has been attacked through the years. It has been attacked by emperors, philosophers, scientists, and even by some believers. Even by the church. Even within the church, the word of God has come under attack. But it is evident today. It is evident that despite all these attacks, despite all these 
onslaught from various persons and from various powers despite all that is happening to the word of god there is something about the word of god that keeps bouncing back every time the devil attacks the word the word shakes off the attack and keeps bouncing back the bible my friends is like a little juggernaut it is just indestructible there is something about the word of god it cannot be defeated it cannot be brought low it cannot be it cannot be destroyed my friends there is something about the word of god and so in spite and despite of all the attacks against God's word, I can tell you today that the only thing will stand the test of time is the word of the living God. Word of the living God. Stories told of a man by the name of Robert Insergal. Ingersoll, rather. One day, Robert took up a copy of the Bible. And he said, in 15 years, I will have this book in the morgue. I am proud to tell you, 15 years later, it was Robert in the morgue. And the Bible was still standing. So it was that a great mind called Voltaire said that in 100 years the bible would be out of mind and forgotten only to be found in museums but i'm proud to announce to you today that 100 years later voltaire's house his mansion became the Geneva Bible Society. He thought that the Bible would be forgotten, cast aside, maligned, and destroyed. But a hundred years later, his very premises that he died left was printing millions upon millions of copies of the Bible. That's the word of God. In uh, Voltaire and Ingersoll can talk all they want to talk, but they are no more. And yet still the word of God is standing as we talk. The word of God will stand the test of time. The word of God, my friends, it is immutable, unchangeable, and everlasting. Centuries have followed and centuries are past. And there is time to come and still the Bible will stand. Empires have fallen and imperials have fallen. They have risen and they have fallen. They are forgotten and still the Bible stands. Government have decreed against the Bible to exterminate the word of God and still the Bible stands. The atheists and the humanists, they rail against the Bible and still the Bible stands. Higher critics, they deny the inspiration of the Bible and still the Bible stands. Traditions have dug the grave for the Bible and still the Bible stands. Intolerance have lit a torch against the Bible and still the Bible stands. There are Judas is betraying the Bible and still the Bible stands. There are Peters denying the Bible and still the Bible stands. There are classrooms running the Bible and still the Bible stands. And there are Thomases doubting the Bible and still the Bible stands. I can tell you today that the only thing that will stand the test of time is not you and it's not me. It's the living word of the almighty God. The enemies of the Bible, they come and they go. But the Bible remains. Jesus was right when he said, heaven and earth enemies will pass away but my words but his words but his words not one jot and not one tittle not one comma not one full stop not one cross on a t will ever pass away 
heaven and earth. But not God's words. Today my friends. Don't neglect your victory. Don't neglect your compass. When you're sailing on a stormy sea. Don't neglect your anchor. When you've docked on the shore of life. If you neglect your anchor my friends. Your ship will go astray and be destroyed by the winds. The word of God is the only thing that gives us certainty. The only thing that stands criticism, stands doubt and beats every attack that comes up against it. The historians, they have tried to disqualify it. But as they uncover the artifacts of the earth and as they dig up the cross of the earth, they are seeing testimonies that can only be confirmed by the word of God. Every prophecy in the Bible is standing on point. They've tried to miscredit it. They've tried to discredit God's word and still the prophecies are more accurate than any astrologer or soothsayer out there. Anybody reading palms can't read the future like the word of God. Word of God, my friends, is our map to the kingdom. It's our map to the glorious kingdom. The new Jerusalem awaits us. But we are some way off. And we need to journey home. The word of God is the light on the path that shines to the kingdom. The word of God, my friends, is the vehicle to the kingdom. The word of God, my friends, is our only hope to the kingdom. I can hear the psalmist David Shouting in the songs of the Psalms, saying, Thy word, O God, have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against thee. I can still hear the psalmist singing, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. I can still hear the psalmist shouting, How shall a young man cleanse his way? But by taking heed to the word of God. And I can hear Jesus saying. Usher for us David. Because man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. I can hear Jesus saying to the disciples. Sanctify them O God. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. I can hear Peter saying. Lend me the mic master. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Whereon to he do well that you take heed until the light shineth in a dark place. And until the day dawn and the day star arise in our hearts. We're coming to a close. The story is told of a man by the name of Edwin Rushworth. He was a skeptic all his life. He lived a life of seemingly success. Ella Phillips. But as he got to the end of his life, Edwin decided... That I've been so skeptical about the Bible over the years. Let me just give it a chance. And so Edwin decided that he was going to read the Bible. I never understood how that works. How can you doubt something you've not read? And how can you believe in something you are neglecting? It doesn't quite work. We cannot say we believe and yet we neglect. Belief is not about what you say. 
It's about what you do. And so Edwin, in spite of the fact that he, he's never read the Bible, he doubted the Bible. And so one day he decided to read the Bible. After his first hour of reading, Edwin was so excited and disturbed that he shouted to his wife. After one hour, he shouted to his wife and he said, Honey, if this book is right, we are all wrong. All his life's work, all his success, all his brilliance, Edwin realized that if this book is right, I was wrong all along. And so intrigued, Edwin continued to read for another week. And after he read, he ran to the kitchen to his wife and he shouted, Honey, honey, if this book is right, we're at the end of time and we're all lost. We're all lost. And as he was so sad because he was wrong all his life and now he's living at the end of time and he found out that he's lost. But I'm glad Edwin did not stop reading. He went back to his rocking chair, sat down, and continued reading. Suddenly a smile popped on his face, energy in his feet. He sprung up out of the chair, shouted across the living room. I can imagine that Edwin ran into John 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth in him shall not perish. Edwin shouted, honey, honey, if this book is right, then we may be saved. My friends, Today we can stand ashore that this book is right. There shall be wars and rumors of wars. Haven't you seen that this book is right? There shall be pestilence upon the land. Haven't you seen that this book is right? There shall be natural disasters of all sort and kind. Haven't you seen that this book is right? But the most important revelation in the Bible is the story of salvation. As we close, my friends, I, I encouraged you earlier, don't neglect the word of God. It is your victory. It is your salvation. There is power in every line. There is power behind every word. There is something about the word of God you will never be able to fully understand. But revealed in the pages of scripture is the story, true story of a son of man. He left the splendors of glory took off his kingly authority put on the garbage of humanity 
stepped across the galaxies into the womb of a sinful woman born of a woman the bible says that in the fullness of time god sent forth his son born of a woman i want to tell you today that everything around us will fail and pass away but the bible say it with me the bible the bible will stand the test of time friends will pass away but the bible will stand forever time will pass away but the bible will stand forever this earth will pass away but the bible will stand forever your money will pass away but this bible that we believe in will stand forever your jobs will pass away your government will pass away all the politicians will pass away your favorite sports will pass away your favorite car will pass away your house will pass away your health will pass away even your looks will pass away your hair will start to gray everything will pass away but i can stand sure today that if you stand on the living word of god it will never ever pass away it will stand the test of time the bible my friends will stand taller and shine brighter you ask me the question why is the bible so indestructible why is it so undefeated i can't answer you this morning this afternoon rather but the bible can psalmist david says forever o lord thy word is settled in the heavens the, uh, the the prophet isaiah says the grass withers and the flowers fails but the word of god the word of our god it endures forever jesus says heaven and earth will pass away but my words will never pass away and i can tell you today that the reason the word will never pass away is because in the beginning was the word and the word my friends was with god but the word wasn't just with god the word was god and the same that was in the beginning is with god was made flesh and dwelt among us and i can tell you that without him was nothing made and there was nothing that came forth that came forth without the word of god the bible says god spoke and it stood fast and it commanded and it came into place and i can tell you today that at the appearance of jesus the living word of god at his name my friends every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord of lords jesus says lo i come in the volume of this book it is written of me it is written of me the word of god my friends is the living son of god and so how shall we have the victory except we hold fast to God's word the apostle paul gives us our closing statement he says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood your enemy is not your brother it's not your sister 
It's not flesh and blood. Your enemy, my friends, is principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. But Paul says, yes, we're in. We're in to face a mighty foe. But we don't have to face him alone. We can face him by putting on the whole armor of God. We can put on the helmet of salvation. We can put on the breastplate of righteousness. We can put on the belt of truth. We can put on the shoe of the gospel. And Paul says, listen to me. As you put on all those defensive ornaments and defensive uh, weaponry i can tell you something that there is something you can use to defeat the enemy to defeat the principalities to defeat the kingdom of darkness there is something you can use it is the sword of the spirit and paul says in case you don't know what's the sword of the spirit it is the living word of God. And in case you don't know what's the living word of God, it is he who hung upon the cross at Calvary. It is he who came to die for our sins. It is he who defeated death at the, at, at the glorious Sunday morning. And it is he who sits on the right hand of glory. It is he, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. The church is standing. Church is standing. God's people is standing. I want you to make a commitment today. We're out of time. Time is far spent. I want to appeal to someone today. If you've heard the message. And you're tired. You're tired. Of this world. And it's suffering. You're tired of the emptiness of, li of a life without God's word. You're tired. Of the pain. And suffering. You're tired of the death. The war and the bloodshed. And you're saying, Jesus, I want to find peace in your word. You haven't given your heart to God as yet. Or maybe you have wandered far away from the kingdom. I want to give that person the opportunity today. I want to give that individual the opportunity to embrace the word of God. Where you're standing, just raise your hands. If today you want to say, forget about the world. Forget about everything. All to Jesus, I surrender. Is there such a one today? You want us to pray for you? That you will surrender to Jesus. I see you, my sister. I see you, my sister. I see you, my brother. I see you. My sister at the door. Is there anyone? Any more? You want prayer? You're saying, I want to surrender to Jesus. I want to give my heart to the only one that can save me. Is there any more today? Keep those hands up. Keep those hands up. Don't take them down as yet. Keep them up. Keep them up, my brother. God sees those hands. I hope we're looking. I hope we're looking. You can put them down now. Thanks be to I want God. to There's a hand raised appeal to, our congregation to those at Olympic, Olympic Way. If, if, my friends, you're tired of this world, raise your hands. Elder Phillips will take note of those hands. Sister Pansy Bernard will take note of those hands. 
finally i'm asking god's people in god's church today at olympic way and here at sea view garden make a commitment to god today that you will spend more time in the word of god that you will try your very best to spend time every day in god's word there is no other way my friends there is no other hope wake up in the morning and reach for the word of god before you go to bed reach for the word of god that is the way to the kingdom it is the word of god beg the holy spirit to give you an understanding of god's word and make every effort to understand and to comprehend the word of god my brothers and sisters try to read your bible it's the least we can do i'm going to invite pastor to pray for us i'm going to invite pastor to pray for us but make that commitment today raise your hands with me if you're committing to read the bible today to spend more time god is taking record of this vow right now if you used to spend five minutes spend 10 minutes if you used to spend no minutes spend 10 minutes or more if you used to spend an hour go for an hour and a half spend more time in the word of god we can't afford to neglect the book that says urgent message do not neglect pastor is going to pray for us now remember your commitment today remember your commitment on the 19th of march 2022 it's 106 remember your commitment pray for our friends pastor who wants who want to give their lives to god and pray for the commitment that we're making spend more time in the word of god thank you so much pastor livingston for the word we're going to be praying now i invite you to bow your heads with me loving father in the name of jesus we humbly bow it's out of hearts of indebtedness that we register our commitment today there are others who started the week but have not lived to see its climax here we are on the seventh day of the week the sabbath of the lord the final day of the week the blood is still warm in our veins and we're breathing which signal another opportunity to make our wrongs right not only with each, each other but with god and so today lord on global youth's day the 19th of march we are registering and renewing our commitment to you and with you we're saying that we have erred we have sinned we have neglected the word we have been leading lives absent of your voice and so today we have decided that having heard your words we wish to have your words guiding and leading and becoming a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path we wish not to hear nothing else save jesus christ and him crucified today we renew our commitment to be digital disciples today we renew our commitment to extend invitations to others to be students of the word to be disciples and to come to know jesus whom to know his life eternal we are mindful that nothing else will last all our pursuits all our ambitions they shall go but the word of god shall stand forever 
we're mindful that your words are also what will make us wise unto salvation. And not only that, it will be that guide that will sustain us from the beginning of our journey until you return. And so we are committing to make the word and to esteem it above our necessary food. Thank you for the preaching of the word. Thank you for the clarity with which the words came to us today. And may today not just be an event, may it not be another special day, but may it be a special moment, a time in, in time where we are making and renewing our call and our election with God. So thank you again. And may today mark the beginning of a turning point in our lives. We put before you those who have not yet surrendered to you and having heard your words, they are contemplating. The crusade starts the 3rd of March. Hello, April, young people and youth leaders. And praying, I'm Pastor Gary. Individuals who are in person watching, we pray, Lord, that we will begin making our minds up to follow the God who loves us with an everlasting love. So thank you again. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for giving us your son whom scripture describes as the word that became flesh, that gave himself for us so that we may have life and have it more abundantly. It's towards that end we pray. The end of abundant life. In Jesus' name, let the church of God say, Amen. 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 I amen. Want to Please be seated. Dismiss us, Lord. Pray for the family as they continue to grieve at this time.